Today we have another TV fight scene that we will dissect to see how realistic it really is. Our video today comes from a series called Mr. In Between. Now I've never seen it, but, the sh uh, but I have seen a few clips from the show, and uh, I gotta tell you, it looks pretty cool. Let's see how they do with both a gunfight and hand-to-hand -hand scene. Mm hmm. Well, uh, I gotta tell you, I think if most people were out taking a walk in the woods and their dog stopped and sensed something, and you sensed something, you'd probably think it was a bear. Probably not a guy hiding behind a tree with a shotgun. I am guessing this fellow has probably had a prior altercation with someone um, and is expecting an ambush. Uh, pulling out his uh, firearm and counter-firing. I believe this uh, video takes place in Australia where guns are illegal, yet somehow everyone's armed. <laughs> That's how it works in real life, by the way. Only the bad guys have guns. Although I think this guy's a good guy, but he found the gun illegally somehow. Okay, so we're seeing a lot of shots fired and, uh, on, and all of them have missed. I'm not sure if that first guy with the shotgun uh, was hit or not. But this is actually pretty realistic. Um, according to statistics that I've heard, uh, at about 12 feet, uh, an untrained individual is going to miss most, if not all, of their shots. If you've ever been to the gun range before and you're out there and you, you get your side alignment sight picture, you're at like 25 feet and you're like, yeah, I got this all day long, bro. You're calm, there's no bullets flying back at you, you can take your time and, and, and you're new to shooting and you're like, <laughs> pop, and you're like, holy crap, how'd I miss? Um, guns are high skill tools and they're, they're actually really hard to hit, especially in a panic situation. So that's actually pretty realistic. Okay, uh, he had cover. I think I would have stayed behind that cover instead of uh, moved out into the open. Uh, but once again, I, I, I don't have his perspective. I can't see where that other guy is. I don't know if he needed to move because he was flanked. But yeah, I, I probably wouldn't run out into the open where you now can be shot far more easily. Ah, shotgun guy did not get hit. That's a pretty good shot to make at uh, that distance on a moving target, so I'm guessing our fellow is quite well trained. How many shots has that fellow fired with a revolver? Uh, <laughs> Unless he's reloaded or has a second gun, he should be out. What's going on here? You in? <laughs> you in? <laughs> Are you yeah. out? Maybe. Are you? Mm, maybe. You show me? <laughs> I guess we're going to get to see the hand to hand fight scene now. Let's see yours. All right. By the way, a great opportunity for one of them to be lying and either have a second gun or actually have a new magazine in the. Uh, in the pistol, and then as soon as you come around, you just let the slide release go and get on target and shoot. But, uh, well, that wouldn't be any fun. We wouldn't get to see the hand-to-hand -hand fight scene now. Which I presume is coming. Okay, here's another thought. Uh, if you are indeed, uh, if you've run dry in this case, why not just simply keep the magazine in the pistol, uh, let the slide release go, and reholster your weapon? Because uh, after this fight, you're probably gonna wanna get out of there and you don't wanna go, oh crap, where did I put my gun? Plus you can use the gun to hit with as a melee weapon. Ooh, little guy versus big guy. Here we go. Lock and hit, I'll be damned. Duck and hit, I'll be damned. Okay, fatal mistake that our, our uh, uh, protagonist has made. He, he, he blocked, he countered, 
he, he, he dodged a punch, he countered again, he stunned the attacker, who now has his back to him. Oh my god, go in for the kill! Don't sit there and wait for this guy to recover. This guy could be pulling out a knife right now and spin around and, and slash or, or charge him with a knife. Uh, he could have a second gun. Quite frankly, even if he's just going to continue to fight unarmed, you're allowing him to recover, square back up, and go back into a fair fight. Uh, this is kind of one of those life or death scenarios, and even if it wasn't, why in the hell, if you're involved in violence, would you want it to be a fair fight? Go get this guy now. Finish him. Tough look, can I? So obvious when you see people kind of do that look away thing, they're about to do a sucker punch. In this particular case, he was too far away from the punch, so what's it going to be? It's going to be a charge. Our protagonist was not prepared to know how to defend uh, the charge. He put his arm up in some weird way. I don't know what that was supposed to be. He got taken to the ground. We're now in a ground fight. Um, we need to know how to, how to blade our body, utilize our forearm to, to stop someone on the side of the neck as they rush in. Um, Tony Blauer would call this a, a flinch spear response. Um, I've made videos on it in the past. Um, that is going to keep you from having to go to the ground with a guy who is much bigger. And I don't care what any BJJ people say on the ground, size absolutely matters. Absolutely. Probably even more than it does standing up. Speaking of uh, BJJ, our protagonist could use a little bit of grappling skills. He's, uh, he's blocking some punches, but he's, he's not doing too well. He's kind of panicking. Okay, so we see the bad guy has got his thumb on the eye of the protagonist. The, uh, the, the good guy is, is got a hold of his beard and he's pulling him in. That's not helping his cause. You're, 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 you're pulling the guy in so they have better uh, ability to, to apply pressure on your eyeball. Which, by the way, you, you, you cannot gouge somebody's eye out unless you securely really securely lock their head in because if they can move around if they can pull away there is there's just absolutely no way you can gouge that eye they're just going to move I mean he's he's making it worse by grabbing the back of his head and pulling him in once again he's just you got to get away from the eye gouge if your eye is being gouged I promise you you're not going to be thinking about, oh, what am I going to do? You're going to be panicking and freaking the absolute blank out. I see what he's doing. Yep. So <laughs> he pulled him in to, to bite his nose. Um, hey, awesome. But once again, that would never happen because when your eye is being gouged, even if it's a moderate amount of pressure, uh, you're not going to have the wherewithal to uh, pull someone in to bite their head. You're going to be pulling away and pushing away. What he could have done instead, he could have done a hip thrust to uh, dislodge uh, or disrupt the guy's balance. He could have taken his own thumbs up, put them on the guy's eyes and pushed. Now once again, that would not cause an eye gouge, but what would happen is as those thumbs pushed up against the other guy's head, the other guy would have went, ah. he would have stopped gouging our protagonist's eye and he would have pulled away, which would have set up the opportunity to do the next move, which once again, if you don't possess grappling skills, and you're on the on, on your back against a larger guy, uh, you're in trouble. Oh, yummy. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, that was pretty quick, but it looked like his, his eye was like popped out of the socket. That's not really what happens when an eye gets gouged. Uh, but but let's just say that whatever happened, there was some sort of, of, of serious traumatic damage to the eyeball. Um, you know, I, my, I'm a little rusty on my neuroscience, but there's something like 20 or 60,000 nociceptory nerve endings in each eye, which nociceptory nerve endings are like flinch nerve endings. They're, they're like threat nerves. And so that is why we are so protective of our eyes. That's why if you see someone get poked in the eye in MMA, they're like, uh, 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 they, they get like a mandatory five minute, uh, or at least an optional five minute wait. Uh, I think it's mandatory. Um, so no, you, you're not going to be able to just uh, uh, pop your eye back in. Um, 
there's going to be too much traumatic damage. He'd probably be on the ground screaming. Uh, just like the guy that got his nose bit off is not going to be like, oh, whatever, I'm, let's get back in this fight. He's going to be like freaking out psychologically, physiologically, just <sighs> still a great fight scene. <laughs> Chuck in the nose, missing. Oh yeah, I'm fine. I'm just breathing heavy from having my nose bitten off. Nice eye. Nice fight. Square him back up. Here we go. Okay, so I couldn't quite tell on that first one, but as the, the bad guy came in, it looked like he used his fist to hit the other guy's fist. Um, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. First off, you probably won't be able to because of the speed with which the fist is coming and the accuracy required would be very, very difficult. Uh, second off, if you're the person with more frail hands, I mean, who, who's got bigger man hands, uh, it's probably going to injure you more. He might have used his elbow. On the second one, he used the back of his elbow against the guy's punch. Now, I will tell you that is, it's very effective to use your elbows to block an incoming punch. It will cause a tremendous amount of damage to someone's hand. It might even break it. Bare minimum, it's going to make them like, kind of flinch and stun. What you don't want to do is when someone throws a punch, you don't want to try to hit their punch with your elbow. It, it, the, the accuracy required is just really, really difficult. It's possible, but it's, it, your, your odds are, are, are difficult. A way to make it effective is to simply keep your guard a little higher, get your elbow about the height of your nose, and just turn and put your elbow where your face was. So they're trying to hit you in the face. All you have to do is go, nope. You pull your head back, you put your elbow there, they punch, they hit your, 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 the point of your elbow, and uh, quite possibly you break their hand. If not, you stun them, which is the opening that you need to go in. Straight blast, tie clinch, take them out. <laughs> Once again, this is opportunity, he's letting the guy recover. <laughs> and the fight's over, huh? Okay, so uh, I caught him with a right hook as the uh, guy charged in at him this time. Uh, risky, whatever, it's a movie, it's possible. Stomped on him twice, not sure what he stomped on, we'll just presume it was the head, and then turned his back. This guy tried to murder you, murder, not beat you up, murder you with another guy, and you're going to turn your back on him that quickly. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You don't know that guy's toast, not from one punch and two kicks to what might have been the head. Don't turn your back. This guy could get back up. He could pull out a knife. He could charge you. You're in deep trouble. Do not turn your back. Can you believe his dog's just been taking a nap this whole time? <laughs> Thanks for the help, bro. I'm kidding. His dog is surely dead. <laughs> Why did I laugh at that? It's terrible. Man lost his dog. Oh, he's not liking that. Told you the guy wasn't finished. He is now. Good night. Well, if there's anything I have learned today, it is don't go to Australia and make enemies. If you do, don't take your dog on a hike in the woods. Okay, seriously, once again, awesome fight scene. Uh, some things are realistic, and of course, some of them are not. TV and movies have <laughs> really come a long way from the old cowboy punches that took 30 seconds to load up while the other guy just stood there and waited for it to come in. Um, you know, so... Bravo, that was, a, that was a great fight scene. Hopefully you, you got some, uh, some good information out of me di uh, dissecting it. If you do like this series of me reviewing TV and movie fight scenes uh, for what would really work and what wouldn't, please let me know down, know down in the comments and I'll keep them coming. Until next time, go train to become a warrior and by God, stay out of Australia. It's dangerous down there.